2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there, just around the corner, and it keeps you going. It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. Dying Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we're about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult this with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders, one way or another. After this, you'll start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply has allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level. And that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safe for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water in the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade. But this, in turn, attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you'll have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world, your own city from the apocalypse. Each player's game experience will be unique. And by the way, this is just what happens in the day. At night, well, things tend to get a lot darker. showed up. Everything was great. I'm not gonna lie. This apocalypse has been too much fun. Chaos. Pain. Mayhem. This is the only world we've ever known. See, when you make everyone else fear you, you get to be queens. Queens with a dope ass kingdom. Too much fun. 
much fun. Wow. The end of the world was the best thing that ever happened to us. They call those transformed by the virus freakers. Jesus. What's wrong? Freakers. They hibernate. They drink. They have migration patterns. And they eat. Mostly, what they want to eat, that's you. Swarmers are the most common. Their name comes from their behavior. They travel in groups of two or three, rarely alone, and sometimes in hordes, which seem to move and respond as if a single organism. Newts are opportunists and only attack if you're low on health or if you invade their space. Screamers you want to watch out for because they can bring swarms down on you. Run into a breaker, you're in trouble. Key to survival are your weapons and skills. Need to burn out a freaker nest but you're out of Molotovs? That's no problem. Your crossbow can use bolts that you craft in the field. Guns dropped by enemies, they're not great, but survivor camps will sell you better hardware. In a gunfight, combat focus can be the edge that you need to survive, allowing you to really focus in on a target and take the shot. Or use stealth, take him down quietly. Since ammo is scarce, you gotta be up on your melee skills. Crafting and repairing weapons is essential. In fighting one or two guys, sure, yeah, take them on. More than that, you have to be careful. Run away. Live to fight another day. In days gone, you have to take on everything from snipers trying to pick you off in the trees to wolves looking for an easy meal. Are you ready to fight?